How was up, y'all? Pop was crying. It's Dave Boss Rex and it's Jamar and Vid. It's titled This Was Awful. It's regarding the Mike and Jake Paul fight. So he's gonna give us some highlights, I'm sure. Um, give some more insight. I was gonna react to highlights and put it on my Patreon, but several people told me it's not worth it. Like, don't even waste your time. <laughs> like, there are no highlights. Like, this this is not worth reacting to. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna react to Jamari's video about it and he'll you know let us know what took place um so yeah let's watch what's going on guys obviously this is not my normal setup i am on the road but mm -hmm. i did have some time today so i wanted to talk about the fight last night between jake paul and mike tyson unfortunately mike tyson did lose by decision but i am glad there were no knockouts at least on jake's part Overall, the fight was very disappointing on several fronts, so let's talk about it. And before I even start, let me just preface this by saying the only influence of boxing match worse than this one was probably the Dylan Dennis versus Logan Paul special, where Dylan just refused to throw a punch. He made the whole thing kind of a joke. And in the meantime, Logan Paul could literally not knock out an immobile target who was not moving. I mean, the guy was just standing there taking blow after blow, pause, and Logan just could not get the job done. Now let's talk about a couple of things that happened before the fight. At the final weigh-in, Mike does come out, junk out and all, and he ends up actually <laughs> slapping up Jake Paul after he stepped on yeah, his foot. Oh, that's why he slapped him? See, I didn't know that. A lot of people thought this was a purposeful tactic by Jake. Some people were saying it was set up. Some people found it strange that Jake kind of crawls up on all yeah, fours like a gorilla. Fuck? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but Mike looks pretty genuinely pissed right there. He does. This is what Jake would say after getting slapped. I don't even feel it. He's angry. He's an angry little elf. Mike Tyson, I thought that was a cute slap, buddy, but tomorrow you're getting knocked the out. I'm f***ing him up, Mario. I'm f***ing him up. He hits like a Listen, guys, I don't know if it's the fact okay. that Jake Paul's the first influencer to develop CTE oh. or if that's just the steroids raging through his body. But Mike Tyson would indeed not die in that ring. Here's what Jake's mom would say after she saw her little boy get slapped. Not her little boy. Thank you for you. Girl, go to hell, lady. You slap harder than him. <laughs> He's like, remember all those times you abused me, mom? Then Jake starts talking oh. really crazy before the fight, saying, I believe I could beat Mike Tyson during any phase of any part of his career. My guy, if you went into the ring with like a 25 to 35 year old Mike Tyson, he would have literally flatlined you in 10 seconds. Like, let's say back in the 80s or 90s, this would be like a popular musician or a popular movie star wanted to box Mike. You know how much back then that absolute killer would have loved to just fuck someone like this up? He probably would have done this shit for free. Before the fight, Mike even had his whole ass out. What's your prediction? What? This is when. This is when. Thank you, Doug. Love you. Love you Don't too. Don't show it. Okay, good. Cause I'm about to say, I got and this was it. actually a really big foreshadowing because from here on out, the rest of the stream would just be absolute ass. <laughs> I mean, Netflix claims that they prepared for all the traffic coming to their platform. It's going to be Netflix's biggest live sports event to date. Big. The streamer to... tells us everyone no, from know. IT to production has put their all into preparation and will be ready to combat any and all technical issues that may arise. Well, basically like 500 million people are watching this fight at once. Or I guess I should say they were trying to watch it because they were just staring at a buffering screen. Oh, I was actually really down in the lobby of this hotel last night trying to watch the fight with like a little crowd of people. And this motherfucker was back there trying to load up Stream East on the side, okay? He had a laptop. I mean, this is how sad it got, guys. At one time, Antonio Brown was streaming the video on Twitter and you had 6.6 .6 million concurrent viewers watching. Keep in mind, this is a view from the actual stadium. You know, there at AT&T, they got the big old Jumbotron, so someone just set up a phone there, and he collected all those Twitter shekels. I mean, the fact that one man's phone could handle a 6.6 .6 million viewer live stream, but Netflix was apparently totally unprepared for this traffic. Yeah, it's just crazy. hilarious. This is not the first time this has happened for Netflix when they've tried to put on a live event. People anticipate it. They might even buy Netflix just to view this one event, and then the shit doesn't even work. When it comes to actual boxing, it was a snooze fest. Mike's legs got wobbly around the third round. I think he was pretty gassed. And at the end, it really just seemed like Jake, just out of pure respect, was not going to knock this man out. He was kind of just giving him jabs, kind of securing the win. I think Mike only threw like 85 punches total or something like that, and very few of them connected, this being one of them. And I'm not really seeing that much power behind that punch at all. As you guys can see, Jake uh, remained relatively unfazed. 
I wish so bad that someone would Canelo. just sleep this guy. Yes. He keeps calling out Canelo. Listen, Canelo, I know you're like a charity man. I know you like to do things for the local community. I mean, you could put some serious philanthropy on your resume by knocking this motherfucker out. And this is how you know this shit was so fake. At the end of the fight, you know, Jake was bowing down to him for about 10 seconds there. And I wish that Mike would have just taken this moment right here and just teed off on his head like when you're in T-ball and the ball's just sitting there. All you gotta do is swing. And you know, Mike, looks like he kind of thought about it. But he say he sticks out the hand, okay? We're looking at a new era of Mike Tyson. And sadly, you know, when it comes to his physique, I thought that Mike looked pretty good. It did appear that he was training really hard for this fight for close to over a year. But sadly, guys, Father Time ends up coming for absolutely everyone. This man is almost 60 years old at this point, and he really just could not last. His best chance was mm -hmm. just to go, like, all out for the first Why he fought like, two man? or three rounds and just totally gas himself out and maybe try and get the knockout. But it really just wasn't happening, and it was pretty apparent uh, very early on in the fight. Here, Jake Paul praises Mike. He says he's the GOAT. First and foremost, Mike Tyson. It's such an honor. Let's give it up for Mike, bro. This is, he's a bitch. legend. He's the greatest to ever do it. Obviously, the toughest, baddest man on the planet. So it was it was really tough, like, like I expected it to be. So there, Jake's just showing some respect. After the fight, you obviously got Logan standing around in the background yeah, trying to get his airtime. You know he always tries to make these situations about himself. And when Mike tells him, hey, I want to fight you too, Logan, this is what uh, Logan says. Logan, I think he said you might be next. Well, fuck, I'll kill you, Mike. Now, I won't lie. I think even like a 60-year-old Mike Tyson might beat up on Logan Paul. Not that I want to reopen Pandora's box here, guys, but this guy couldn't even knock out Dylan Dennis when he wasn't even moving. You know, when it comes to Jake, at least he has all those knockouts on his resume. He might not be the most impressive fighters. But for Logan, it's like, bro, you never even won a boxing match, okay? You're lunch lead, you know, businessman. Looked your ass multiple times. <laughs> After the fight, Tank Davis would post this on Instagram where he says... To the bozo that shared the ring with Mike, you a whole bozo for this, and you didn't get the job done, shithead. Here, Jake would confirm to a reporter that he was apparently taking it easy on Mike once he saw those legs get a little bit wobbly. At any point, did you start to take your foot off the gas just a little bit because you noticed he was tiring out? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a bit. You know, I wanted to give He's the fans old. a show, but I didn't want to hurt someone that didn't need to be hurt. I mean, Why yeah. even do this in the first place then? Why even enter the ring with him if if you felt this way? You you knew how it was going to end. Honestly, last night, if he would have just like brutally knocked out Mike Tyson, I mean, he might have gone down in history as the biggest douche of all time, and he's already, you know, in the running for that. But Did you feel Mike's power at all? No. Oh. He hit you at one, and you gave him the tongue. But it didn't actually hurt. No one's punches have like really hurt. I, I got buzzed a little bit against Tommy. Maybe Fury, because you got CT, you're going crazy. This was early in the fight. Like... People were saying, oh, Mike still got it in him. I don't know how Jay claims that this punch cannot have affected him. That's that power we wanted to see. Ooh. Other people were saying, yo, this fight had to be rigged. This is nothing like what Mike looked during his sparring sessions, during his training footage. <laughs> I mean, obviously, there's a big difference between going through practice and going into the actual game. I'm sure other people out there who have played sports, not even boxing, but really, like, anything else, have known guys who were cold as fuck in practice, but when it came down to the game, they were cheeks. And then after the fight, they apparently asked him if Canelo would be his next fight, and Jake says, I don't need Canelo, he needs me. And I do think that Jake will continue to fight undersized guys he's who are so like cool, way out of their so. prime, but just from a whole different sport. Like, look at the opponents he's had. That's so he lame. retired NBA player Nate Robinson, 40. Okay, that's his first fight, you know. People just wanted to see what he could do. They were impressed with the knockout. He retired MMA fighter Ben Askren, he was 40. Obviously, that guy was known for being an elite grappler, was never known for his boxing. He retired MMA fighter Tyron Woodley, 42. Now, Tyron was known for striking in his UFC career, but obviously, like, the striking in UFC, does it always translate well to boxing? Probably 
not? Then he goes in there and beats Anderson Silva, who was already 49 years old. People thought that that was crazy. They thought that that was, like, way too past his prime to fight. And then he obviously loses to the only boxer who was even close to his age, Tommy Fury, and also the only person who was really, like, a professional boxer. Beats mm -hmm. him, I retired MMA a fighter Nate Diaz at 39. I mean, everyone always says, oh, Nate's had this, like, iron chin. But even that fight was pretty garbage. And then he beat up on Mike Tyson last night. 58 years old. You know, guys, I really thought that That's Mike could maybe right. turn back the clock for this one. I thought that he would look a little bit better than he did, but he did end up looking like an old man out there, and it was very is. sad to see. Like, I don't know, it felt like elderly abuse or something. It was just sad. <laughs> and at the end of the day, you do have to give some credit to Jake. I mean, the guy is an expert in marketing. He's an expert in making money and putting on these events. I think he made, like, I don't know, 50, 60 million dollars last night, which is just fucking insane. But yeah, I hope someone puts an end to his little social experiment yeah, that he's been doing ass. for the That's last couple of I'm years on. soon. But I don't know if he'll ever put himself in that sort of compromising position. Because without boxing, and once he, you know, actually gets knocked out by somebody, I don't know how much he really has left in the tank. Like, I don't really see this guy going back to being an influencer or anything like that. Going back to Disney. I don't know. Y'all let me know y'all's thoughts now. <laughs> I cannot stand Jake. I really want someone to knock him out. I blame him 1,000% for this nonsense. <laughs> I don't blame Mike at all. That's just me. But yeah, I didn't know his track record was this bad. So he has a history of fighting several people who are older than him, much older than him, who are retired. And that's who you're bragging that you beat? And, and the one time that you did fight somebody who was close to your age, you lost. You lost to Tommy. So wh what are we talking about? You can't really even have any bragging rights at this point. But this is embarrassing. For, for Logan. I don't think this is embarrassing for Mike. He got the braid and he left. So, I, I would do the same thing. Anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!